Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power. And hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. Who are you going to be this weekend? Are you going to walk in your identity as a child of God? Or are you going to fall back into your subconscious programs? This is the walk, the 24-hour journey. As we look at our weekend We may have some things going on where we live here in America. I should say where I live in America, we've got Memorial Day weekend. It's an opportunity for us to thank all of the veterans who have lost their lives, all of the people who have stood up and protected our country with the most incredible sacrifice, their actual life. Even though many Americans don't even think about that, they're just happy to have a day off of work and go party. That's truly the intent and the reason of the day off. So many of you may be going to parties. And the only reason why I bring this up is because I don't want you to go to this party if you're not fully walking in your identity. Here's two scenarios. You've got a party with a Actually, a couple of scenarios. Let's just walk through this. And this is what I want you to do when you have events and when you have things that are going to challenge your new lifestyle of how you eat. Maybe even you're going to some of these parties where there are people there who trigger you or who you don't like. There's many things at parties that not just food There's alcohol. Maybe you're going to be stuck in front of a bunch of people who are smoking pot or doing other drugs that you're trying to get away from. There's lots of things that can tempt you. Maybe you're trying to stop swearing and you know you're going to this barbecue where that's all they do is swear. So if we put on our identity as a child of God and we step into prayer and we step in to that event. We put it on. We see how we're going to act. So if we walk in confident, proud of ourselves for walking in God's light, not pride, but proud that we made this decision. And then we have to decide what are we going to do? Are we not going to drink? Are we going to have one or two drinks? Are we Just going to have a bunch of drinks and enjoy ourselves, but not get drunk. When I say a bunch, I mean, if it's like an all day kind of event, just pace yourself. Maybe you're having water with every drink. What are you going to do with the food? Are you going to eat like a glutton or are you going to pick and choose purposefully? Are you going to be a witness? Are you going to realize that what you have on your plate may be a trigger for someone else. Someone may look at you and say, wow, you have no bread on your plate or you're eating so little or something could be the opportunity for you to turn around and evangelize. Oh yeah. You know, I've been abusing this body that God gave me for way too long. Think about that. Can you imagine that worldly person look at you (laughs) like what kind of a response is that all I was saying was you're not eating much yeah I'm not eating much because I've been a glutton and I've treated this body so poorly that I'm done or you could 
Go the other route where you say that you're going to be walking in your identity, but then you don't want to. And you're moping about it and you're complaining about it and you're not having fun. You're standing in the corner because everybody else is having some wine or beer and you decided you weren't going to drink, but you didn't have the right attitude about it. You look like a pouting little child and nobody wants to hang around that. Neither do you. Neither do you. You don't even want to hang with yourself when you're like that. And if you see this delicious piece of cake or brownie or cookie or something, because sometimes some people make the most amazing desserts and you just look at them and your mouth (laughs) starts watering. Now, this is the true test. What is it that you want to do? Because I don't want anyone to fall into scrupulosity over a stinking dessert. That's not the journey, everyone. But it could be a challenge for you. It could be a nice test to say, I'm not having any sweets. And then that just becomes your decision. Because sometimes when we limit what we have, for example, when I do my fasts, I'm cool with the fact that I'm not eating today. (laughs) I don't have to think about what I'm going to eat. I don't have to you know, debate between this or that. I don't have to fight some sort of like, you know, desire versus what I really should have. I'm just not eating. So it makes my life so much more simple. I don't have to make that decision. It's kind of bizarre the way that works. So that could be the way that you approach it. I'm not having any sweets, period. And then when you look at them, you, <laughs> you have to remind yourself what they do to you. We need to associate the foods that are palatable and that we have trained ourselves to love because they taste so good. We have to remind ourselves what they are doing to our body, to our mind, to our muscles, to our heart, to our veins. And on top of that, If you start that sugar craving, you're going to start that back in your body. You're going to need to get that sugar out again. It's going to take you 48, 72, I don't know, maybe even longer, depending on how metabolically damaged your body is. And again, it's not all about the diet. It's about health. It's a lifestyle. It's walking into your identity and looking and saying, I don't eat that poison. That's not who I am anymore. And maybe, just maybe that won't work for you. Maybe you will find that you are being taunted by that cake or by that dessert and you choose to have a piece. This is where the rubber meets the road. Don't beat yourself up for it. I suggest that you take every pleasure in that piece of cake. Swirl that sugar around in your mouth. Get that chocolate shoved up in your teeth or coconut or whatever the heck it is that you're eating. And those first couple of bites just just what is the word I'm looking for? Savor them. Just keep it in your mouth because this is what happens. Everyone, the first, after the first couple of bites of something delicious, I don't care if it's savory or sweet or sour or whatever, if it's delicious, the first couple bites is all you need because then the bites after that aren't nearly as good. So that's what I suggest. And maybe you just have a couple of bites. Maybe you don't finish the whole thing. But I don't want people being guilty and ruining your whole weekend because you had that cake. That's what I don't want for people. Scrupulosity is a very easy thing to fall into. And when we're talking about our diets and what we are putting into our mouths, including liquid, it's not a mortal sin 
to eat sugar, even though this is your covenant with God, for example, maybe, maybe it is. It's not a sin to eat sugar. It's a sin to be a glutton about it. That's the difference. So pay attention. Walk in your identity, but love it, wear it, own it, just own it, own who you are. And I want to wrap up with this one story that just goes to show that people are could possibly be projecting in many, many ways, more often than not, a life that people want to see. So as you're out and you're maybe being envious of someone who's throwing the party because it's a perfect party all the time, we don't really know what goes on in that person's life behind their closed doors. We really don't know. And I'm going to share, I stumbled across this woman who I have loved for so many years. She is Shailene Johnson. She does a bunch of workout videos. She works, used to work for Beachbody. She does Pio. She has all these turbo jams. Um, Shailene Extreme. She just does all of these videos and she's amazing. And she came clean with the fact that she was totally traumatized in that industry. She was working out three to four hours a day. She would only drink and eat protein shakes and Shakeology and all of the products that they had because she did not track the whole food. She just needed to know exactly how many calories and exactly how much protein and carbs and all the macros were that were in these packaged foods. She was basically eating chemicals, not real food, working out three to four hours a day. And she not only had her beach body business, but she had her own multi-million dollar video business before beach body got her. And so she was working two companies, managing them plus developing all this stuff. And bottom line, she was getting two to three hours of sleep a night. Now I wouldn't look at this woman and think that this was the case. But what happened was she eventually knew something was wrong. She went to the doctor, she got a brain scan, and she was like practically on the death's door. Let's just say that because she had killed her metabolism so much because of so much exercise, not enough nutrition, not enough repair and rest for her body to, you know, build the muscle. I mean, seriously, she could not build muscle. And her body was just eating itself and destroying itself. And her brain scan came back with major issues. So she had subconscious programming about food, about exercise. She calls it an orth, I don't know, it's ortho, orthorexia or something like that. But it's someone who over exercises. It's just amazing because you look at someone and you think, They've got it. They're happy. They've, they're perfect. They're healthy. They've got this, all this money, this great business. By the way, on top of that, she said that she was constantly sore. And this means not just sore muscle soreness, but like sore to the touch. She, when someone would touch her, she would bruise her, her bones were breaking. She knew something wasn't right. I'm sharing this with you for a couple of reasons. Number one, don't be thinking that the person that maybe you're envious of or you think has it all together, we never know. This is why judgment is so bad. We don't know a person's heart. We don't know the true life that they lead behind their closed doors, even those closest to us. And the other thing is, that that what she was striving for in the fitness industry, even herself being in it, was impossible. All of these people, she says, and I love them dearly, they all are 
They all have a disorder. They all have issues with food, with exercise, with each other, with, you know, just the infighting and all of that kind of stuff. And now she doesn't have a scale. She works out, but she strength trains. She used to be, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you. She used to work out for three to four hours and then she would come home and run. I mean, come on. She wouldn't go to bed until midnight and she'd get up at three. I mean, this woman was killing herself slowly. And in the end, people looked at her and said, I want to be that. And her big aha moment was it needs to be sustainable. We need to have a life that we can live. So live it. Enjoy your barbecue. If you want to have the cake, have the cake. If you want to challenge yourself and you want to really step into your temperance, then do it. We're all in different phases of change. Some of us are like balls to the wall. And I'm sorry I said that, but I love that phrase. (laughs) Some of us just go full bore. I mean, that's what my mom says to me. She goes, man, you just go all in or nothing. Like, can't you just kind of ease into things? And that's just not my style. If I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go. Like I did in January, right? New Year's Eve. Oh, let's do a 72-hour fast. Oh, forget that. Let's make it five days and nine hours. I mean, (laughs) I, by the way, should not have done that. That was too long for my first prolonged fast. Don't do what I do. Do what I say. I've said this in the Soul, Mind, and Body group a bunch of times. But anyway, that's the whole point. We can be involved in life and not be like Shailene was, where she couldn't even eat real food because she didn't want to fall off of this strict plan because of her job, because of what she did, etc. Excuse me. And at the same time, now she's 54. She says, I'm in the best shape of my life. I've got so much muscle. I can walk around in a bathing suit. She said, I did not like my body back then. I was not comfortable. I thought I was a fraud. I mean, how many of us play that game? I know I did. They're going to figure out I should not be a chief information officer. (laughs) They're going to figure that out pretty quick. And that's what she was saying. I'm not a fitness expert. I'm just a person who can put some energy together, choreograph things with music and moves and really make it fun. And that's what she did. That's what I loved her for. That's why I have so many of her DVDs. All right. But her big, big big point was, look, life is short. We need to enjoy it. She doesn't freak out when she doesn't work out. She has strength training for four out of the or five, four or five days of the week, different parts of her body. She's in the gym for 30 minutes and gone. She actually did a workout with her makeup on. She did a video of her workout and she came out not even sweating. She was like, that's another thing, ladies. If you like to get yourself all done up, you don't have to sweat yourself to death like in intense cardio and high interval training. By the way, she also said that because she used to do high interval hour train training. She says, now I do the low impact stuff. I go for a walk. I make myself more active during the day. It's more mobility kind of stuff. And I just think it's just a reminder to us (laughs) that we may see things in other people thinking their lives are perfect when in essence, it's totally the opposite. So be you. Love you. Pray with God this weekend to step into the identity that he wants you to step into right now. You may not be fully ready to step into your true identity. We're all in different parts of this journey and of change. But I say give it a shot. You may dance in and out of both identities, your old self, your new self, but it'll be interesting to watch, to see how other people react to you, 
to see how you react to other people and other things such as food and drinks. I don't know, hon. When I say hon, I mean it, you know, <laughs> not like I call my husband hon. To the men and the women on this, I don't know, hon. Think about it. Think about it. This is where we're going to get more into our soul, searching out who we are. And maybe even identifying fear and anxiety and worry for who we're supposed to be. Maybe we're afraid to be that person. I don't know. This is the walk. But it's really cool when you face yourself and you're like, okay, I'm ready for this. One last thing. Please don't use this weekend. Let's say you're going to be joining the soul, mind, and body, conquering addictions, perpetual sins, bad habits, you know, all that fun stuff. Maybe you're joining that June, July, and August. I'll put the link here if you guys want to join. $4.99 a month on my YouTube channel. And you're going to just go crazy and party like nuts over this weekend. I know that thought process. I've done it <laughs> thousands of times. Oh, going to start the diet on Monday. Better eat all the cookies and all the ice cream that's in the house because we certainly don't want to throw that out. Try not to do that because that's the wrong attitude. That is a punishment thing, you know, because in the end, it's not that you may never have, you may never have that cookie, by the way, you may get to this other side and be like, oh, I just can't stand that stuff. Like I'm telling you, I know people who will say, I do not eat that poison. I remember back a friend of mine, oddly enough, was a cokehead, marijuana smoker, but worked out at the gym all the time. He was so buff and he ate great. Funny, isn't it? And he would say while we were eating pizza, oh, I don't eat that poison. And to me, it was amazing, but it was kind of ironic because at the same time, I'm like, okay, you won't eat this poison, but you're going to snort a whole couple lines up your nose and <laughs> you know, have a couple bongs. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> that doesn't, that doesn't compute. It's not congruent to me, my friend. Anyway. Okay. Now I'm just jabbing, jabbering. Sorry. Okay. Crazy. I said, balls to the wall. I said, hun, what is going on? Kind of a crazy morning. Who am I? All right. My apologies. I don't usually say that, but it's appropriate because a lot of us are like that. And that's me. So if you're like that, you get it. Hopefully you laughed. No judgment. All right. I love you all. Find something more with God today. Soul, mind, and body. And let's seriously think about the weekend and how we're going to step into our identity. What identity are we going to wear? And what attitude are we going to wear with it? And practice what is going to happen at the party. Practice that awkward hi with that ex-wife that you haven't seen or <laughs> that, that person in your family that did that thing to you and never apologized or whatever. You know, that person who's the opposite political view of you that you know you're going to get into a conversation. Practice that as well. The more we know answers to why we're doing what we're doing, the less we have to be on our heels when people question or debate us. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> have a blessed and inspired day.